outmoded, you know, outmoded interpretation. It goes back to Genesis chapter 3. I will put enmity between you and the woman. The devil hates the woman. We see that in all cults. We see that in the old Mormonist cult, in which women is treated as uh, lower than the rights of a man. In fact, many Muslims tell me that Islam treats women properly. Islam is very fair with women. I have but one question to ask and a challenge that no one was able to refute. There are many Muslims who marry non-Muslims. It happens all the time. People fall in love. Now, how often do you ever hear of a Muslim woman marrying a non-Muslim male? Rarely ever happens. Why? Because if a woman who's a Muslim marries a Christian or a Jew, she is to be killed by the family. But a male can marry a Christian girl as many as he wants, no problem. Why? Could there be a double standard there? It's always the case everywhere I go. An American woman, a Christian, marries a Muslim male. In fact, that's kind of stupid to do because Christ himself said, do not be unequally yoked. Both cause death. Satan is the causer of death. He is the one that caused death in the garden. In fact, the, the name of Allah and one of his 99 names is Al-Mumit, the one who causes death. Al-Makr, the great deceiver. And all these names that attributes, is attributed to Satan, what is attributed to Satan in the Bible is attributed to Allah in the Quran. Both condone rape. In fact, the rape epidemic in countries in Europe when Muslims are raping European girls is immense. Take the city of Malmo in Sweden, second or third largest city in Sweden. They sell chastity belts there for the girls. It is horrendous what happens. North African males, Lebanese males in Australia, a major epidemic in Australia where Muslims are raping girls and the clergy are approving of it. Say, so, well, if you show meat, cats are going to eat it. If you show flesh, dogs and cats will eat it. So, what can we do? Cover your bodies, wear hijab. They're trying to enforce the hijab to make the woman look like a tent in order to establish an Islamic hegemony because Islam is very simple. Islam is not merely a religion. It is a constitution that wants to spread its tentacles throughout the whole globe in which Muslims becomes dominant, women dress like a tent, and Muslims and Islam becomes dominant over all the religions of the earth. In fact, many Christians read about the mark of the beast on the foreheads. And in Islam, it's very clear. Even in the Quran, talks about it. It talks about what is called Dabbat al-Ard, the beast of the earth. When the beast of the earth arises, it will mark all the Muslims on the forehead in order for the Muslims to be identified from that mark on the forehead from all non-Muslims. So if a group of people are sitting on the table, you'll identify the Muslims from that mark on the forehead. The unholy thing in the Bible is the holy thing in Islam taking a mark on your forehead. Both break treaties. Islam with its hudna, establishing a ceasefire in which up to 10 years you as a Muslim nation must break that treaty before the, uh, uh, the, the finality of that treaty up to 10 years. Why? Because Islam forbids having an eternal peace treaty with non-Muslim nations. Because the goal of Islam is to spread Islam, whether it's by force or whether it's by peace. So how could you have an everlasting peace treaty? The Antichrist clearly breaks a treaty after seven years. In the middle, Islam surely matches in its, in its uh, theological concept the religion of Antichrist. Both love booty. If you look at booty in Islam, just go look up a hadith uh, manuscript and search for the word booty. 
the Bible talks about booty. The Bible talks a lot about booty when it talks about the ends of times. In the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, the battle of Gog and Magog, as they come on Israel, they seek what? Booty, food, cattle. It's food they're seeking, not oil, and not the minerals of the Dead Sea. I mean, I like these books that I read, but they don't have any grounds. The Bible says food, it means food. For years I've been telling my wife, the price of food is going to increase. In fact, a couple months ago, I stashed my storage with a couple hundred pounds of wheat, a couple hundred pounds of rice, a couple hundred pounds of pinto beans and what have you. And sure enough, my wife thought I was crazy. A month later, boom, the price kind of doubled. I knew that the food is going to go up. The depletion of the food will continue with tsunamis and things like that. Because the book of Revelation tells us clearly, do not harm the wheat and the wine. What part of that is unclear? Both lead a Turkish-Iranian invasion. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad clearly said that you notice the coming of the Mahdi of Islam when he leads an invasion coming from Khurasan, and that is in Turkey. The Turkish flags will come. And I have a whole list of things that I've documented in my coming book, God's War on Terror. I have also a video series that discusses these elements in detail because one hour is not enough. It takes really hundreds of hours to go through this whole thing. The book ended up 750 pages, and that's condensed. Just to compare to you the eschatological elements in Islam as I learned them versus the eschatological elements that I learned in the Bible as I was searching the Bible, it was shocking. No one was able to document all these things, so I took it upon myself to do the most researched thorough study in history to document the parallels of Islamic eschatology versus biblical eschatology. We know very well from the book of Ezekiel that there will be a war coming from the area of the land of Gog and Magog. Now the scholars differ. Some scholars say that's Russia. I don't agree with that. Because if you look at all the Bible maps, they all clearly tell us that the region of Gog and Magog, Beth to Garma, Gomer, and those regions are within the regions of Asia Minor. Russia had a split. The CIS nations, the Commonwealth of Independent States, were Muslim, split from Communist Russia, and have their own states, which comprises exactly what you see in the Bible maps when you look at the area of Magog, Beth to Garma, Meshech, and all these things. In fact, Take your favorite prophecy book and look at the evidences for Russia because there's many prophecy scholars that says Magog is Russia. Take these books and look at the historians that they quote. Look at the quotes they provide you of the historians of these nations and, the, and these tribes. All the quotes of all the historians say that these people live in southern Russia, yet the authors expand it to Russia proper. I know Russia supplies these countries with weapons. But so does America supply weapons to Saudi Arabia. Supplying weapons does not entitle somebody to be the Antichrist. You know, both talking about the Burak, in fact, Muhammad talks about his ascension into heaven via this being called Al Burak, which looks like a bird or like an angel. He wants to ascend into heaven. In fact, the story of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. Look it up on the internet if you don't believe me. Isra and Mi'raj. Like Mirage. The ascension and dissension. As the Prophet Muhammad supposedly ascended unto heaven. The Mahdi will be the recreation of Muhammad. He will have the spirit and the soul of Muhammad himself. In other words, the Prophet of Islam will come again. Well, who dwelt the Prophet of Islam? What entity dwelt the Prophet Muhammad? It was none other but Satan. Satan will dwell the body of the Mahdi as well. So if Muhammad ascended into heaven, who else in the Bible ascended into heaven? I will ascend unto heaven. I will be like the Most High. You know what I'm talking about from the book of Isaiah. In other words, he wants to parallel Christ as he ascended. Christ ascended unto heaven. He sat on the right-hand side of the Father. In fact, 
Muhammad sits on the right side, right side of the father.